Well, hello. <laughs> Glad to see you're back. Come on in. Let's sit and talk for a second. I was just finishing up some analysis on an idea. In fact, it hit me yesterday. I was, I was reclining, and my dog had fallen asleep in my lap. And I thought, where does my dog go when it goes to sleep? <laughs> the truth is, we, we consider that our animal companions are sentient, like we are, right? Because they are loyal, they have a social intelligence, it seems, at least within their species. Um, they're aware of their environment. They uh, flee danger, right? They embrace love. Um, they uh, have all the essential feelings that we do. So they're sentient. Except for that they really can't express it out in, in concrete terms like we do with language. Uh, Nonverbal, perhaps, and certainly uh, we interpret it a great deal. There would be many who would say that we anthropomorphize the uh, reactions from animals and therefore they might be tainted by our own impressions. So let's forget about my dog for a second. Where do we go? Right? Uh, I think, therefore I am, right? That's essentially the qualifier for sentience. Um, but the question is, wh what are you thinking about? And what is the process of cognition? Now you could go online here on YouTube or whatever and you can find a gazillion people who are going to give you explanations on thought. I'm probably not going to give you one that's direct, but I am going to give you some directions as to your thinking process. For instance, because in terms of al alchemy, it is important to understand the process of consciousness since the language which you deal in and the structures which you utilize are essentially forms of consciousness brought into symbolic relevance uh, as a result of a narrative that is given from one person to another and then therefore that that symbol is understood. So I could draw a really primitive picture, a stick figure, and, and it would look like nothing until I say that the stick figure is actually a person. And now you can identify that not only is that stick figure a person, but it's very likely that every time you see a stick figure, that's also another person. That's kind of how symbols work. And that's how consciousness works, right? It's through this negotiation of relationships. But where does our consciousness reside? It, it's not up here, although there are a lot of people that would say it's up here. The truth of the matter is, the same systems that are in place for testing if your television is working properly are also exactly the same systems which they use to see if your brain is working properly. It does not suss out the core of your consciousness. It only demonstrates that the brain is this fantastic electromagnetic receiver. Period. What is it receiving? In terms of alchemy, it's receiving the sixth sense. That's right. The wadget eye gives us the clue to that, where the eyebrow represents that aspect of consciousness or thought. That's a sense, just like smell or touch or taste or sight or hearing. Thought in Egyptian thought and in alchemical thought in, in our paradigm is considered a sense. It is your sixth sense. <laughs> quite remarkable from what we see that is generally taught, right? We seem to think that the ability to think resides wholly in the brain, and, or perhaps in the heart, um, and, and yet there's no foundation for that. Uh, if you, we cut your head open, or mine, you would never discover what my favorite color was, or the first time that I ate chocolate. It's not in there. You wouldn't be able to determine um, what I felt about uh, certain things. Only that there is this gray matter which is receiving electromagnetic signals from the environment wherein we live, which is absolutely saturated with electromagnetism. So, when you think about consciousness, and you think about our bodies, 
and the fact that when we sleep, we seem, which we need, we absolutely need sleep, you must ask yourself, why? Why is it that we require sleep, and where are we going when we do sleep? What are we participating in when we sleep? We seem to recall dreams, but the truth is, most of us, myself included, rarely remember what we dream. Rarely, and they're rarely as extraordinary as what people seem to recount with these fantastic visions and all sorts of stuff. Most people actually have no recollection whatsoever of their dreams, and if they do, that recollection evaporates within the first 15 minutes of waking. Why is that? What is the process here in waking consciousness which is different from sleeping consciousness? Why is it that persistence in waking consciousness will cause madness and death, but you can sleep all you want, and your body will eventually f wake you up. You just can't sleep forever, but and, and the no illness results from sleeping forever, you know, <laughs> ask any teenager. But uh, uh, quite the opposite, in fact, if you are ill, you probably should be sleeping to recover. What are you drawing upon that helps you recover when you're asleep that you can't draw upon or seem to be unable to draw upon when you're awake? These are the kind of questions that I sit and think about as I'm having my morning coffee. What do you think about? <laughs> if you have any questions and things that you'd like to share about what you think about, or if you'd like to see me address any other topics, Leave them in the comments section below. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you later.